Good morning. Here comes the FUD. Da, 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 da. <laughs> What's up, baby? Shake off the Monday blues with some cryptocurrency news, baby. Of course, welcome back to the My Crypto Journey live stream here for coffee and crypto on a beautiful Monday day in Southern California. And guess what? I'm getting over this sickness. I was down with the sickness all last week, baby, but now I'm feeling much better. Still a little sick, still a little contagious, but I feel a lot better. Guys, do me a favor. Smash that like button. Push us up in the algorithm and let me know in the poll of the day. Do you think the market is going to pump or dump this week? I have a very grim feeling, but of course, I am a doomer. And it looks like the cryptocurrency markets are cooling off a little bit, which is fine because... They've been going absolutely crazy, especially after the bullish sentiment after the Federal uh, Reserve, or Jerome Powell spoke last week. Guys, it's so good to see you guys in the chat. We have the whole squad here. And guys, make sure to check out my sponsors for the month. I got a lot of them. First, MetaMonkey AI, Awesome Awesome, will be coming on at 9 a.m. to talk about the keys to the city with us. Volt Inu, smashing through. I mean, just absolutely killing it with price action pretty much promising to hit a $250 million market cap, which is crazy. So they're not even there yet. Pomeranian, we're having an AMA tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'll put a link to that tomorrow. And of course, Cookies Protocol doing a big, big raffle and giveaway. Make sure to check them out. Links to everything is in the description down below. Hashtag ad, hashtag yes, they are paying me to talk about these projects, guys. Invest with caution. Make sure to do your due diligence and go through the projects yourself. Now, what's up, everybody? How's your weekend, man? And if you're watching this a little later, we start the show at the five-minute mark. I spend the first five minutes greeting the chat. Of course, a lot of people know that. And guys, make sure to check out this week's giveaway. Remember, every Monday, I give away $50 in a stablecoin to members on my channel. So, you know, and we can switch that to ETH right now since I think this is a nice time to buy some of the dip. So... Good morning, guys. Hope you're all doing well. The link's in the description. Of course, you have to be a member on the channel. You have to have an eggplant next to your name, and you have to go ahead and retweet the link in the description down below. But let me say what's up to the chat. I don't think I'm going to be able to get to everybody this morning. You guys are chatty. Let's go. We got Jayhawk in the chat. Jay Linda Combo. What's up, Javi? What's up, baby? Give me the Roddy Chats, baby. Smash that like button. Zahul says, don't spread FUD. <laughs> Tim, good morning. What's up? What's up? Renaissance Kinetics, Timbo Slice, Matt, uh, Sacco. Somebody speak to my man my manager. We got Alfred. How you doing? MMA fan here, uh, fam here to uh represent. What's up, baby? Chris, Gabe, Racket Club. What's up, baby? James. We got Bud in the chat. We got who else? We got here. We got Crypto High. High on crypto. We got Matthew Frank Garcia. Crypto Art, I think I already said that. Joe Dirt. What's up, Joe Dirt? You're my sister. You're my sister. If anybody knows who that's from. Citizen Kane. Don Larson. DJ. What's up, DJ, baby? What's up, Raymond? Uh, Doobie Tube. Nate. What's up, Nate? Nate. What's up, baby? Eric. What's up, baby? Mizzy Matt. What's up, baby? Okay, I appreciate it. Mizzy Matt says, okay. <laughs> okay, I'll let you know if you win. But part of the thing is being present in the chat. But if you win, I'll, I'll hook you up. 007, what's up, baby? Omar, what's up? Manny, Crypto Hunter. We got the whole squad in here. What's up, Big A? You know what's up. <laughs> Tectonic fam in the house. Tectonic video coming today, guys. There's nothing really to talk about with Tectonic. Those boys need to post more on Twitter. Like, how do you expect me to talk about y'all when there ain't nothing to talk about? But I still have a nice bag. What's up, Jamos? How you doing, Manny? Welcome, welcome, guys. Smash that like button one minute until we start the cryptocurrency news. Soap God, what's up, baby? Soap God in the house. Crypto for retire. I'm doing well. How about yourself? You guys have a good weekend? What'd you guys do this weekend? You guys have a fantastic... Dude, my weekend was pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Did a lot of fun things. Hung out with some new people. Um, very, very fun. Man, I love like just going out. And maybe I went out when I was sick, allegedly. Only one day, though, allegedly. But I feel better. And just meeting, like, new people. And just, like, hanging with new people. Like, I, I don't know. I'm having, like, the worst case of FOMO these days. Like, the, the, the FOMO has been absolutely crazy. I don't know what it is. Like, I cannot stay in, bro. Yeah. I miss you too, Jayhawk. All right, you guys ready to start? All right. Let's get into it. Of course, the title is 
hey, man, you got to prepare for a crypto crash or not. Well, what do I mean? Well, the cryptocurrency market right now is chilling at a, a $1 trillion market cap. And that seems to be, you know, the price where or the market cap where we feel comfortable at, especially in a bear market. Now, you know, of course, three trillion dollars was the all time high three, three, tri three point something trillion dollars. And we've been kind of trading sideways ever since. Now, I want to talk about something that's really important, guys. The reason why a lot of the cryptocurrency market is at the market cap where it's at is because of the huge catastrophes we've had in the market. And of course, that's FTX. And of course, started with Terra Luna, right? Terra Luna started it, FTX ended it. And we're hoping that the, you know, the, the, the catastrophes are gone when it comes to Black Swan events. Now, of course, another thing that could trigger a Black Swan event would be another a uh, massive dump in the market, right? Because here's the thing, Terra Luna was only exposed and a lot of these companies were only exposed when the money started coming out of the cryptocurrency market. And we really found out which cryptocurrency companies were over leveraged. We found out who was, you know, quote, swimming naked when the tide went down, right? Shout out to uh, Warren Buffett, right? But what we've noticed is that recently that, you know, the United States and a lot of people are really turning hostile on crypto. Well, last year in March, uh, uh, Daddy Joe Biden put out an executive order for the United States to really, you know, just look and see what's going uh, on, right? They wanted to see, they wanted to probe and see, okay, how do we gain control of what's going down in the cryptocurrency world? And this was before we started seeing the massive collapses of these huge cryptocurrency entities, which left a black eye on the entire cryptocurrency market and really a stain on the cryptocurrency market. And here's the thing, we're already starting to recover. The cryptocurrency market, we're easy to forget the crazy things that have happened. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? I don't know. Because on one hand, we want to be able to recover and move on. But on the other hand, we have people like Sun Tzu, right? The, uh, one of the founders of Three Arrows Capital, already involved in another cryptocurrency project, which is an exchange to help exchanges that have been wrecked or people that have been wrecked. And the question is, are, should we have people that have ran failed cryptocurrency projects that wrecked a lot of people because of their being over leveraged and bad business practice, should we allow those people to get into another project? Now, it is common for people to start a business, fail a business, start another one, and you know, be successful because you know, we know that most businesses fail. It's like 80% or something crazy like that, right? Most new businesses fail. But should we allow people that have like obviously you know, done a lot of bad things in the cryptocurrency space and wrecked a lot of people because of bad business practices, should we allow them to move on and create? new uh projects you know and javi says hell no 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 and that's my that's my kind of uh feeling i'm like i don't know about that you know maybe under new management now recently ftx right said that or john ray the new ceo of ftx handling their bankruptcy said hey you know we could probably possibly reopen ftx under new management and the the question was well would you guys trust ftx with new mas management and better business practices i don't see why not Right. I don't see why not. I mean, what do you guys think about that? Right. Um, you know, I, th I think that under the management is the whole uh, the whole reason why the business went down before, because Sam and Fried was doing shady shit. Right now, the name association will affect the norm normies. Right. The people that don't know about, you know, FTX, who was running it, but they know that it failed. So it could be it could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing. But it's very, very interesting. Right. Um, so. This week and next week are really going to rely on all kinds of numbers coming out, right? We got to see what the earnings uh, for some of these top companies, wh when they come out, what do they look like? What we do know right now is that there are some earnings that are good. We do know there's a lot of job job cuts, and we do know that Americans are a lot of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. And all it takes is for one catastrophe for an average American to kind of lose everything, right? A crazy st statistic for me. A crazy statistic was 50% of Americans earning 100, over $100,000 are living paycheck to paycheck. All it literally takes is for one bad event for this person, for their whole like life to just be on pause. That's a catastrophe. When you lose your job and you, you have bills due in two weeks and you're not getting a paycheck, or maybe they didn't get a good severance package or something like that, I mean, it could really mess up someone's entire world. And this person, Majestic, posted, with taxes and high living costs, 100K is nothing. And let me know in the comments, do you think 100K, you could live off 100K? Let me tell you something. In Southern California, 100K is good money, but it's still almost nothing. It's not nothing, but it's almost nothing. And what do I mean? If you're making 100K, yeah, sure, you can pay rent and, and pay for everyday costs. 
especially when, you know, the memes of eggs costing ridiculous amounts, you know, like these days, like food, just food. My rent just got raised two hundred and fifty dollars. Right. When you see people when that happening, to, when you see that happening to people, 100 K feels like nothing it depends on where you live. But 100 K, man, is absolutely insane. And Jayhawk says, F no, I pay 42 K a year for my mortgage. Right. And then gas. Right. The cost of gas is going up existing in the United States. Right. In the United States is, uh, you know, just a tough. It's just tough to do. Now, Brad says, Rodney, what's a severance package? I know, exactly. A severance package is like a package you get for when a company lays you off, right? Like, hey, sometimes it's three months of pay. Sometimes it's six months of pay. Sometimes it's two weeks of pay. Who knows, right? But a lot of people don't get that, um, don't get afforded those uh, opportunities when they get cut from the job. Like I had a friend recently whose business operated out of Florida and uh, um he moved to, he moved to California and California has different labor labor laws like say what you want about California but when it comes to the worker there's a lot of safeguards for the the, the average Californian worker he got laid off and he didn't even get a severance package he had two weeks of pay that's it in his vacation hours right so some people get it some people don't but you look at credit card debt credit card debt is rising right that's not good because credit card debt is like the, the worst debt you can have why because the interest is so damn high even if you have good credit, it's a credit card, right? Now, credit cards give you these insane rewards because most people don't pay them on time. And these credit card companies can, right, give people free airline miles and those sorts of things if, you know, you know what I mean? If you, uh, you know, if you accumulate enough points and those sorts of things. But the reason why they're able to support all those things is because a lot of people don't pay them on time. They pay the minimum. And they know if you're paying the minimum on a credit card, it is a, it's a zero sum game, right? It, it's like, it's, it's going to come to a big, crash you know and do me a favor smash that like button and let me know in the in the comments down below are you feeling the effects of the economy right now now the federal we're gonna get some cpi data numbers here on valentine's day that's gonna be very 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 big now i think that if we don't get a clear movement to the downside when it comes to inflation then we're gonna see some very very bare sentiment now i'm in the ha i'm in the i'm in the kind of camp of believing that hey I think the cryptocurrency market is going to recover this year and we're going to send into 2024. I think all markets are going to recover near the end of the year. But I do think we have one big dip coming. But that's not stopping me from buying the dip now. Why? Because I believe that some of these top projects are going to be worth more in the future, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, maybe even XRP, Binance, Cardano, and Polygon, maybe even SHIB, Avalanche, right? There's a lot of these projects that are going to be worth more in the future. And I think that even right now, before a big dip comes, since we don't know, we can't tell the future, we're still slowly buying the dip, dollar cost averaging. I'm not trying to time anything. I don't do any of that stuff. I like the dollar cost average and just slowly invest over time, especially right now in what what would what would uh, call what would some would call, excuse me, a bear market. So let me know in the comments down below. Do you think we're going to pump or dump in the next two weeks? And of course, that's the poll of the day. I'm interested to hear your opinion on that. It's going to be very, very interesting, right? I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. We're going to all be, you know, hanging out together, and of course, we, we're going to go live on Valentine's Day, obviously, to see exactly how this affects the cryptocurrency world. Now, to the next story, and I thought this was really, really interesting uh, because last year this was a huge topic of dis of discussion. Now, a lot of people. A lot of people didn't think this was a big deal last year, but I thought it was great for mass adoption. What was that? Well, what's the biggest sporting event in American history? Well, it's it's the fucking Super Bowl, right? The Super Bowl. Look, here's the thing. Football is called football in other countries, like soccer, right? We call it soccer here. And football is huge in the United States, right? It is our pastime. It is our game. I, I do think, though, as time goes on with, uh, you know, how dangerous football is, it may be a little frowned upon, but I, I, I can't see us giving up football. Justin, Super Bowl confirms all cryptocurrency ad deals fell apart following the FTX collapse. Now, why is that a big deal? Well, because it, it's a, less of an opportunity for cryptocurrency companies to promote and get the message out there during the Super Bowl. Now, some don't care. Some thought they were cringy and corny. I thought they were actually pretty neat. But I do understand that ads are not everything. But it does help when it comes to mass adoption. Now, the reason why FTX was such a big deal collapsing is because it, it was literally one of the biggest brands during the last year. 
one of the biggest brands. Just the connections that SBF had, the promote, the influences they had in Steph Curry, Tom Brady, right? All these people, right, that were you know sponsored by FTX, it made it made them a household name, and they went down in the worst way. They went down in the worst way. Not only did the company go under, right, because some companies just go under, right? They go bankrupt. They did it because Sam Bankman Fried was doing a bunch of shady shit. Right. So it looks even worse. Like we have Terra Luna collapse, you know, death spiral. We had, uh, you know, uh, you know, Celsius go bankrupt. You know, we had Voyager go bankrupt. People say they had bad business practices, too, but they weren't doing anything illegal technically. Right. But Sam Bankman Freed was doing illegal things. Now, Super Bowl. Uh, so, so check this out. This is an ad from February 5th last year. Right. So this is Super Bowl's coming out party. Right. Um, excuse me. This was crypto's coming out party, right? We saw the C- we saw the FTX one with Larry David, right? Uh, we saw um, we saw the Coinbase one, right? We saw the eToro one. Check this out. How crypto brands showed up in Super Bowl 2022? Let me see the. Um... We had eToro, right? Remember eToro, and the eToro was interesting too because they actually had a Shiba Inu uh, signal or excuse me, uh, sign or uh, logo. Excuse me. Uh, on their commercial and people are like freaking out, you know, like, oh, Shiba Inu on the Super Bowl, you know, we had uh, FTX, of course, with Larry David, which is, you know, awkward now in hindsight. We have Crypto.com, right? We had LeBron James talking about that. They had the little hidden NFT thing where you had your phone, you could click it out, you know, you know, LeBron James, you know, uh, and we had Coinbase, right? Coinbase Global. It was crazy. Now, Okay, so Coinbase and Crypto.com are still here. Yes, they've made massive cuts. And yes, they've been under a lot of FUD the last year. Most notably, uh, Crypto.com slashed all their rewards right before the collapse of Terra Luna, which to me seems like, I don't know, like they're the messiahs or something. Like they knew something was going to go down, right? So maybe they knew something, was, the writing was on the wall, you know, but they slashed their rewards, which is good for Crypto.com because I'm sure they couldn't maintain those insane rewards for having their little debit card, right? Uh, they cut 20% of their staff, right, this last year. And they came under uh, heavy, heavy scrutiny after CZ, the CEO of Binance, accused them of faking their proof of reserves by because they accidentally sent another exchange $400 million or something like that, right? It was crazy, which, you know, people think that's uh, bad because when they take their snapshots of the reserve, they had all that extra money. I think it was, um, L- not Elbank, but it was... Uh, Forgot the other exchange they were sending to, but uh, what was it? What was it? I forgot the other exchange it was, but it looked it looked pretty shady, right? It looked it looked pretty bad. Um, and of course, Coinbase, right, recently got in trouble for not doing proper KYC on their uh, on some of the people that they can use their that can use their exchange, right? Some of their customers. Um, they got in a little more trouble. Well, they actually actually won a little. Uh, I think it was a civil suit, some sort of uh, lawsuit, uh, accusing them of. Um, issuing unregistered securities, which they won that one, but they also had to cut their staff too. But of course, we trust Coinbase a lot more because they're operating in the United States. Another piece of FUD for crypto.com was a lot of people were accusing their CEO of, you know, you know, managing a bunch of failed businesses and just getting into crypto because, you know, it wasn't, he was an opportunist, but it turns out that no, he had a decent business before it went under because businesses go under sometime. And now he's running a successful cryptocurrency exchange, right? So there's been a lot of FUD for crypto.com and Coinbase the last year, but they're still around. They're still around. Now, this is also interesting. Now, crypto ads, how do we do crypto ads going forward? And when is the right time for crypto ads? Because I think right now, it's a good thing that cryptocurrency projects can't run ads in the Super Bowl. I think so. I think it's still too close. What's up, Burry? How you doing? It's still too close to the collapse of FTX. We need time to forget about all the crap that's been going wrong. Right, been going wrong. I think the only project that could actually advertise and people probably would still fud is Binance because Binance is still making huge gains even in a bear market. Right. Um, but check this out: firms unlawfully advertising in crypto, uh, advertising crypto in UK could face jail time. That's interesting, right? So this is in the UK. So it's like, what is unlawful? Uh, unlawful, you know, crypto ads. And I know that Facebook was cracking down on cryptocurrency ads too. But I think this is a good thing. Now, CZ said something that was really, really interesting the other day. He said, hey, man, like there were some bad things that happened for the cryptocurrency space, right? And it's, you know, it's it put us back a little bit, right? But we're still recovering. The unfortunate part is the normies, 
right? The entire, the entire, the rest of the world that's outside of cryptocurrency still is talking about Sam Bankman Freed. And here's the thing. When he goes to trial in October, it's going to rear its ugly head again. It's going to be a very, very uh, public situation, right? Of course, I don't think there's going to be cameras in this sort of uh, case because I think that's only in civil suits, right? I, I may be wrong. But I know that we're going to get a lot of like news and, and transcripts and those sorts of things coming out of the court sessions when we have Sam Bakeman freed going against his former employees and our business associates. It's going to look bad, right? It's going to look bad. We'll have to see how that situation resolves. Will Sam Bakeman freed get out scot-free? Will he get out with a, a lesser sentence? Or will they throw the book at him? I think they're going to throw the book at him. But crypto ads, you know, Super Bowl ads, not this year. Not this year. So... You know, not this year. And it's going to be a good Super Bowl, too. We have the Eagles versus the Chiefs. Very good game. That's a tough game for the Chiefs, man. I mean, but the Chiefs are the Chiefs, right? They've been there, what, three times in the last four years or something like that? Something crazy like that. So shout out to the Chiefs. Shout out to the Eagles. Maybe they get their, their second Super Bowl ring in, what, five, six years, something like that. So should be good. Let me know in the comments, who are you rooting for? Or do you want to see them both lose? Because some of y'all teams didn't make it. But no Super Bowl ads this year. What do you guys think about that? Do you guys think it's a good thing? Do you guys think it's a bad thing? Now, I want to throw in a piece of positive news here, and it's not a main topic, but I thought this was pretty cool. Visa is testing how to accept settlement payments in USDC and Ethereum. That's pretty interesting, right? So check this out. Towards the end of January, WatchGuru reported that Visa may integrate blockchain-powered solutions into its services to bolster the next generation of payments. The credit card giant's executive, Alfred F. Kelly, revealed that the company believes that stablecoins and CBDCs could play a meaningful role in the payments division. He also briefly unveiled that Visa has a, num uh, a number of initiatives underway. Now, we know that Visa like literally partners with every crypto major entity, even smaller ones, right? like Saitama. Right? We know that they offer some sort of debit card or credit card and, and those sort of things. Of course, most famous with crypto.com, but of course, you can get a debit card with Coinbase, Binance, and like I said, smaller projects like Saitama. According to reports, Visa is already testing how to accept payments and payout on the Ethereum via stable stablecoin USDC. Vice President Head of Crypto at Visa uh, highlighted that the transactions were large value settlement payments. Interesting. Um, there, that's been one of the areas that we want to build a muscle memory. The same way that we can convert dollars into euros and uh, on a cross-border transaction, we should be able to convert between digital tokenized dollars and traditional dollars. Now, the issue is, right, the issue is like uh, price impact and those sorts of things and like how the how fast payments can or uh, cryptocurrency can change, right? Now, this is stable coin payments, so it's a little different, right? But I know that when it comes to like, you know, uh, buying things with Bitcoin or buying things with Ethereum, there's a lot of gray area because one, like crypto is volatile. Like what what about like from, say for example, you're paying with a card using Ethereum or Bitcoin. Like you're at a McDonald's window, right? Maybe you order your food and you're expecting $20, but by the time you get to the window, crypto dropped like 4% because it's super volatile, right? Now, obviously the dollar changes with inflation, obviously, uh, but you know, it's not that fast. So there are different networks like the Lightning Network that help Bitcoin make it so transactions are super quick. But then my question is, well, if the IRS sees, because right now the IRS sees, if you use your debit card to pay with a regular crypto, right, like Bitcoin, it sees you cashing out Bitcoin to cash and then using that cash to buy something, which that's a taxable event. So you get taxed 30% as of right now. So that's kind of shady, right? So, you know, I don't know how this is going to work, or how they're going to make it happen, but there needs to be clear rules and laws on what the hell is going to happen when it comes to using crypto for payments. It says, additionally, a team of researchers and engineers across Visa have been working to evaluate the founders of various blockchains. The focus areas include security, scalability, and operability, privacy, and use cases on different protocols. In fact, the company started exploring options to allow auto payments via Ethereum wallets a couple months back. In the letter... Uh, half of December 2022, the credit card giant released a proposal outlining how users could set up automatic payments. It allows users to eliminate banks and other centralized entities from the equation, which is interesting, right? Now, this says, why stablecoin payments? Now, here's the thing. This is, okay, so this is the whole XRP. This is the whole, like, stablecoins versus traditional fiat. Uh, this is why there's going to be CBDCs, because stablecoin payments are, like, the best, right? Of course, you know, they use SWIFT for settlements at this time, but it's kind of old and clunky and those sorts of things. Like literally to send money, right, from my wallet to your wallet is super, super easy and quick. 
right? Um, you don't really have to worry about the middlemen or intermediaries, right? It's just super, super quick. I don't have to wait, you know, to a non-holiday day. I don't have to ask somebody to approve a transaction. I can just send money if I want for a fee from my wallet to your wallet. And even when Ethereum, the network, Ethereum network is busy, it's still quick, right? So we'll see what happens. But I thought this was a nice uh, piece of bullish news for Visa and cryptocurrency and a, a step towards mass adoption. What's up, Chrissy? How you doing? Chrissy got a new profile picture. What's up, Chris? We have two Chris E's in the house. Tectonic fam. I'll 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 <laughs> I'll show you right now because what I do is I uh, you know at the top of the hour we have a crypto giveaway. So guys, remember if you remember on my channel, we're going to be giving away fifty dollars in USDT at the top of the hour. So all you gotta do is follow the link in the description down below to be a part of the giveaway. All right, so one of the big stories we had over the last seven days was what? Shiba Inu going dummy, running 24%, right, over the last uh, week, which has been insane, right? Of course, you had a huge run, and we had a little bit of a pullback, but SHIB has been going insane. Let me write this down. So what the heck is moving SHIB, Right. Now, we know that a lot of the Ethereum whales hold a lot of SHIB. And this thing is living off of bullish news. Which is bullish news? It's the biggest thing they can do right now, which is the release of Shibarium. Is it going to happen? We don't know. But we do know that Shiba Inu rallies, once again, as ShibaSwap Bone gets listed on a crypto exchange big hit. So if you guys don't know, um, Shiba Inu has a lot of cryptocurrencies and tokens in their ecosystem. And one of those is Bone. Now, some argue... Why do you need so many freaking tokens? Just keep one. But this is going to be used for gas for Shibarium, right? It's going to be the main like token used for their layer, their their own system, right? They need to get off the Ethereum blockchain pretty much, right? They need to cut those fees down because literally the only benefit to using ShibaSwap is that you can trade some of their tokens that you can't get on Uniswap. But it's like, well, who cares, right? Like, what's well, yeah, who cares, right? Unless you're really you're really um about it, right? Yes, we talked about Volt a little earlier. We'll talk about it a little more in a second. Unless you're really about it. Now, I'm not a big SHIB guy, but I do understand its relevance and importance to the cryptocurrency world because Shiba Inu, whether you like it or not, uh, is the kind of template that everyone uses when it comes to just building their project. Everyone models their business model after Shiba Inu, especially last year. Is that going to be the case moving forward? I don't know. We'll have to see. How many Inus are there going to be? You know, I have a feeling that there's not going to be a lot of Inus during the next meme coin run, but there's going to be a meme coin run. So this is one of the reasons why Shiba Inu was pumping. Now, when it comes to bullish news about Shibarium, I mean, I don't know. I mean, they've been Shibarium is supposed to have been out for a long time now. Um, and the people are, you know, they're literally, you know, getting tired, right? Um, you know, of, of waiting and they're tired of, you know, these things that you know don't really matter. Now, of course, this was a listing for BitGet. Now, this is not bad, right? BitGet's not the biggest exchange; it's a exchange, and it's it's bullish news, you could say, for Shiba Inu. But is it like, is it what we need to move this thing like to make it go crazy and to make it stay in the top fifteen? Because just because something's in the top twenty cryptocurrencies right now, it doesn't mean it's going to be there next run, right? But Shiba Inu is still continuing to dominate, and we like to see. 25% runs like this in a week. I mean, what I mean, aside from Tesla stock recently, like what assets move 25% in a week? It's crazy. That's how powerful cryptocurrency is and how powerful meme coins is. Because here's the thing: Shiba Inu is not gonna do a 10,000 X again. It's not gonna do a thousand X again. It's not gonna do a hundred X again. I mean, it could. I'm thinking of like a 10 X, maybe a 20 X or something like that, which is still nice. But when it comes to crazy ass gains like it did before, it's not gonna be that, you know. $100 into a million dollars like it did during the last run. So that's very important to uh, pay attention to those sorts of things. But still, 25% a week is absolutely fantastic. And you know, if you go to the charts, you can see Bone right here was pumping like crazy as well, right? Look at this. Absolutely insane over the last couple of days. So my, my thing is like, hey, if you're investing into these guys, consider taking some profits when you have a massive run. And maybe reinvest it when it dumps again and those sorts of things. Yeah, Volt is going crazy. We'll talk about that right now. But just a little uh, PSA for you guys out there investing into 
uh, the Shiba Inu ecosystem. Um, and besides that, there's really not much going on when it comes to Shiba Inu. It's just this bullish news, right? Now, it's it's weird that we get these pumps and then the news comes out, which probably means like, hey, you know, some of these whales know a lot of things we don't. If you think that uh, the whales don't know things we don't, you are absolutely out of your mind, right? And do me a favor, let me know in the comments, are you guys invested in SHIB? And if so, which are you invested in SHIB or their to which tokens are you invested in their ecosystem? Are you in Leash, Bone, Treat, right? That's going to be coming out, Treat. So let me know about that. Now, the next topic is very, very interesting, which is hilarious. And I thought this was a joke, but it's not. <laughs> and some of y'all need to check yourselves in immediately immediately so check this out spanish rehab center adds crypto trading addiction to services list some of y'all need to check yourselves into crypto trading addiction okay this is crazy to me but i mean i get it here's the thing about crypto right it's addicting and one of the things that really made uh cryptocurrency and meme coins um so popular to me what i believe is that it really tickles your you know, it tickles your your gambling need, right? It feeds your gambling need, right? A lot of people like to ape into shit coins, and that's what aping into shit, coin, shit coins is. It's gambling. It's glorified gambling, right? Literally, to sit here, I know people that literally go to live new pairs on Dex Tools and sit here and just be like, all right, which tokens are just being created, right? And when you see a token named Monsta that was created 16 minutes ago, up 146%, you're like, oh my God, let me ape into this, not knowing. And if you just pull back a little bit, you can see all these negatives, you know, all these like zeros, all these zeros, negatives. These are all rug pulls, right? These are all rug pulls. But I know some people that'll sit there, right? And we have some people in our space, right? That'll shill these motherfuckers that literally launched 20 hours ago, right? It's crazy. They'll shill these. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a good crypto to buy. You know what I mean? It's like, no, it launched 20 hours ago. How do you know that? at least be here for a couple of weeks or something like that, you know? This is absolutely crazy, right? So Spanish Rehab Center adds crypto trading addiction to its services list. Now, what makes this especially heinous, guys, is that I know I know that casinos don't really close, but you got to go to the casino. You got to be, you can't really do them in the comfort of your own home unless you have some of those weird gambling uh, websites that I guess you can use with a VPN and those sorts of things. But even those are outlawed in some states. Now, I don't know any states that don't allow, that that don't allow you from using Uniswap. Like literally, you could send money from your bank, you know, to Uniswap or to your wallet and sit there and just literally trade 24/7, right? 24/7. Which is crazy. Right? Which is crazy. You could sit there and literally swap all day every day, you know? And that's what makes crypto a uh, meme coin so it's kind of scary is because you literally have to stare at the charts. If you're aping into a meme coin, right? And it's pumping. You have to literally sit there and like time it so you don't go to bed and you wake up and all your money's gone the next day. I mean, I talk about this all the time, but how common is, common is it for you to ape into a meme, uh, a, a uh, crypto project, right? One night, it pump 100% and you go to bed and you wake up and you're rug pulled, right? And they're on to the next project, right? Very, very common. So it says, uh, the Rehabilitation Center cited estimates that about 1% of cryptocurrency traders will develop an extreme addiction to crypto trading. And I feel like all that 1% is watching this stream right now. It says, a luxury rehab rehabilitation center in Spain had recently added services aimed at treating a relative new kind of addiction, crypto trading. The center called The Balance is a Switzerland-rounded uh, wellness center with its main facilities located on the Spanish island of Mallorca along with branches in London and Zurich. So maybe they're going to expand that to London and Zurich. While it has long treated addictions such as alcohol, drugs, and behavioral health, it recently began offering services aimed at combating crypto trading addiction, according to a report from the BBC. Now, I used to work at an addiction center. It was a mental health clinic, but it was part addiction center too. It would be so wacky like to see someone pop in, <laughs> pop in and like be like, hey, man. <laughs> Uh, you know, imagine you pop in the room and they're like on Uniswap on their phone. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I need it. You know, it's not funny, but it's, it's kind of funny, you know. <laughs> it says, uh, 
Uh, yeah, so it says the February 5th report revealed that one of the center's clients reached out so that he could wean off crypto after reportedly pouring $200,000 worth of trades each week. Oh, my. What does this man do for a living? Brad says, Rodney, I'm not addicted. I can stop whenever I want. I just choose not to. <laughs> what is this guy doing spending 200 k a week? Jesus fucking Christ. That's my Postmates bill. It says the, the treatment involves a four week stay that involves therapy, massages, and yoga. The bill can be upward of se- okay seventy. Okay, look, if you're charging me seventy five thousand dollars for crypto rehab, I might as well gamble the seventy five thousand dollars, right? I know that I'm not going to get a return on my my well my return on my investment, you know, at this crypto rehab center. But you know, I I could flip seventy five thousand dollars, right? That's kind of crazy. It's a luxury. Uh, I'm I'm guessing. Your, your regular insurances are not covering this stay. It says, in another part of the world, uh, Castle Craig Hospital, a Scottish-based addiction rehabil- rehabilitation clinic treating high-adrenaline crypto trainers since 2018, has seen over 100 clients come in with dangerous cryptocurrency problems. Wow. So high-adrenaline crypto traders. Dang. It says, in Asia... Uh, Diamond Rehabilitation, a Thailand-based wellness center operating since 2019, has also added services dedicated to cryptocurrency addiction rehab and treatment. Wow. So I can, I have to imagine that this is under some sort of gambling uh, kind of banner, right, when it comes to cryptocurrency trading. What do you guys think of this? Tennessee says, do they accept crypto as payment? Chris E says, uh, well, does that 76K with a happy ending with every a day for the duration of the trip? It better come with a happy ending. Better come with something. Excuse me. Jeez. Timbo Sai says, yeah, rehab can be good for people who need it, right? If you need rehab, you can do it. Chevy Fan says, uh, I only do drugs, so no problem. I don't have a problem. <laughs> Todd. <laughs> Okay, so it says the organization said it approaches rehab through the use of cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, uh, motivational interviewing, MI, and psychodynamic theory, PT, as part of its comprehensive multi-stage approach to help traders overcome their addiction, right? It says, uh, related, how to control stress and depression in a crypto winter. Okay, so this is something that people, okay, even for influencers, this is something I've been paying attention to. What I do, guys, is I schedule my tweets for Sunday, and I usually don't even talk about crypto at all Sunday. This helps me because even being an influencer and being in the know, like honestly, last year, you guys know I was working day and night. I was putting out like five videos, like a four-hour live stream every day. And although it was good and it grew my channel, I figured out that when it came to my my physical health and my mental health, it's not worth the trade-off for me. I rather work less, make this amount of money. And then focus on getting outside, walking, hanging out with friends, uh, exercising, eating healthier, and those sort of things. That's what is important to me. And a lot of people that are consuming crypto content are just stuck on the charts all day because, look, it, it's a bad time for crypto. The last six months, the last year for crypto has been terrible. Everything has been dumping, and it hasn't been looking good. There's been so much FUD, and a lot of people, it affects their mental health. So you got to detox, man. You got to take a break from crypto content. Take a break, break off from coffee and crypto. Take a break off from fucking t- Twitter. Is so toxic, right? Take a break. Get out. You're, it's not, nothing is worth your mental and physical health. Get out there, man. Get some sunshine. Health is, yes, the biggest wealth, you know? Maximus says, sounds like mental weakness to me. Maybe. But health is the biggest wealth, right? Take a break. It said, it is believed that the euphoric highs and crushing lows of a fast-paced 24-7 cryptocurrency trading arena have brought in real demand for rehabilitation centers to offer services for trading addiction. I mean, what is the biggest in crypto right now? What is the biggest right now? It's those big green candles. Don't tell me a big green candle doesn't get you guys fired up because that gets me fired up. Seeing a big green candle, seeing a crazy pump gets me fired up, right? You guys too, right? Nothing is better than that. And you know what's even crazier? Seeing green candles in a project that you thought about investing in, but didn't get in. The FOMO is crazy. It is crazy. I get it every time. During the last bull run, every other day something was pumping. I'm like, oh, I should have got into that. Oh, I should have got into that. Oh, I should have got into that, you know? And then you buy and then it dumps. You know what I mean? 
absolutely crazy. What's up, Bobby? How you doing? Guys, smash that like button for me. 20 minutes until our big crypto giveaway. And 20 minutes until we have Awesome Awesome come on and talk about MetaMonkey AI. Right? Of course, hashtag ad, hashtag sponsors, hashtag key to the city, baby. Um, health is a scam. We want money. What's up, Sacco? <laughs> <clears throat> nothing like a big crypto a big green crypto boner right and some of the lowest lows are buying a project and then dumping you're like oh my god you just wasted a bunch of money right everybody loves gambling everybody loves crypto it says an article by family addiction specialist estimates based on gambling disorder statistic about one percent one percent cryptocurrency traders will develop a severe pathological addiction while 10 percent will experience other problems beyond that of a financial loss now <clears throat> what has been really crazy to me is that, like, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me. Some of like, some of the stories out there that that have come from the major crypto collapses, not necessarily the people you know aping money into these you know random shitcoin plays that seem bad. It's the people losing massive amount of money on projects that seem good, right? That seem like a layup, like FTX, like Terra Luna. Voyager Celsius, the lady who lost a million dollars that she saved up over 30 years in Voyager. The guy who lost $200,000 after the FTX collapse made that story, right? He he was part of that story. I think it was on CNBC um, and talked about all the Bitcoin he lost, right? And FTX and his family, like his, his kid's college tuition and those sorts of things. Now, some would say, don't invest your kid's college tuition in the crypto. And I get that. But when you see something that's a trusted brand, like FTX or these other brands that don't seem like shit coins that seem like they're safe plays. When you see something like that, you know, it, it's like, can you blame the people when you see the Super Bowl ads of last year? You know, this is where I'm bringing it all back around. Can you blame those guys? You know, when they see Steph Curry talking about it, Tom Brady talk about it, you know, can you blame those guys? And now they're stuck like Chuck. So some of the massive losses and some of the huge financial losses are not coming from degenerate cryptocurrency traders. It's coming from regular Joes that trusted crypto, that took a chance on cryptocurrency, right? But ended up getting wrecked because of bad business practices, because of people like Sam Bankman fried Alex Mashinsky, Sun Tzu, and of course, uh, you know, people bl don't blame Do Kwan, but I think algorithmic stable coins don't work, right? So now what? What do you do? Yes, it's okay to believe in crypto. How do you believe in crypto? It's okay to believe in crypto. Bitcoins, I don't think Bitcoin's going away, right? We're cryptocurrency maxis. The products are going to be here. So what do you do? You take the power back. Your keys, your crypto. What do you do? You get a ledger. You get a cold storage wallet. You, you, get, a, you get a hard wallet, right? You get a ledger. You get one of these babies. Why? Because shit hits when shit hits a fan, at the end of the day, it's your ass. Take the power back. Your keys, your crypto, baby. Let's go. I have a video in the description of, of this of this uh, uh, live stream on how to set up a ledger, a ledger, right? From purchasing it, how to properly purchase it, unboxing it so you know what to go through. And it's the cheapest ledger too, right? Setting it up on your computer and then sending crypto from your exchange to it. It's super easy to do. Take the power back. Stop trusting exchanges. Look it. I trust CZ. I trust Coinbase. Not enough though to leave a large amount of money on the exchanges. Why? Because if they go to bankruptcy, who gets their money last? You. Right now, a judge disagreed for Alex Mashinsky, the CEO of Voyager, right? That they own $4.2 billion of the assets, right? Of course, they have to pay back their creditors, the, the debtors, right? Like FTX, for example. They owe Apple, Netflix, and Binance money. I didn't know about that, you know? And they have to pay all those people back before they reimburse the customers, right? And... Who even wants to, you know, how much money they're even going to recover? Nobody knows. Take the power back. Use cryptocurrency exchanges for what they're good for. Buying crypto, swapping it real quick, converting crypto into fiat so you can put money in your bank account. And then once you buy it, immediately send it from the exchange to your cold storage wallet. I'll get off my soapbox right now. And let's move on to the next story. Do me a favor, smash that like button if you feel me. Feel me. If you feel me, smash the like button, baby. We're bringing the energy this morning. And this coffee is uh, great. First of all, I like regular ass Starbucks coffee. I think it's great. It's the best. MDK says, why send kids to college? Why pay 150K for my kids to think a woman? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Not all colleges think that way. And here's the thing. People say school is a scam. 
Maybe if you're getting some degree in basket weaving. Maybe if you're getting some degree in fucking, I don't know, whatever. But obviously, if you're a doctor, you know, some sort of profession that requires a degree, school is important. But school's not for everyone. We, we do know that. School's not for everyone. I have a degree. I have a, but, you know, I had student loan debt. For what? To be a YouTuber. Didn't need it. Turns out, but that did, it did help me, right? Um, I did want to do, I did want to do another career, you know, but it didn't work out, right? So, yeah, some people don't need a degree, but I, I do think it's important. For some people, right? Obviously, you don't want a surgeon that says, "Yeah, I just just watched a bunch of YouTube videos on how to do heart surgery." So, slay back, bro. I got gotcha. you. Oh shit, the heart goes in the fucking chest, not the head. Oh, sorry. You know. Okay. Next cryptocurrency story, and then we'll get on to the giveaway. This is going to be interesting. Now, part of the collapse of FTX, right? One of the big things that happened with the FTX collapses, they're doing something, they're trying to do something called a clawback. Well, what is that? They're trying to get some money that was wrongfully given out. You could say wrongfully made. They want to get that back so they can give it to their creditors first. And then maybe some of the customers who got wrecked by FTX. Now here's the thing. Is it worth it sometimes? Because sometimes it's not worth it to jump through the hoops it takes and the money it takes, right? To get back money uh, from people that money was wrongfully given to. Like for example, say if, uh, maybe like someone you're working for robbed a bank and he gave, he paid you your salary, or maybe someone gave you a bunch of like a lot, maybe how about this? How about your uncle robbed a bank? Maybe you knew about it, but you didn't and gave you like 50, $50,000, right. Of that stolen money. Now, if he ever got caught, they would need to recoup some of that money and you may have to give some of that money back. Now in this situation, since SBF wrongfully was, uh, was mishandling customer funds, uh, they're going to try to get some of the money he donated to politicians. Now, you guys didn't know, this man donated about $40 million to, po to politicians. And he said he donated way more, like, off the record. What does that mean? Now, cryptocurrency and political donations, a very interesting relationship. So they want to allow it. They want to allow politicians to get cryptocurrency donations. And honestly, guys, politicians are not going to care how they get the money, as long as they get the money. But there's a few rules. One of the big rules was, hey, you need a person who specializes in cryptocurrency, right? We call them the crypto daddy, right? We call them a crypto daddy. You know, this is like an old story. And here's the thing. When they send that cryptocurrency to them, they have to immediately turn it into fiat. You cannot hodl it. You can't trade it. You have to immediately turn it to fiat, right? And you have to keep a very, uh, a very uh, a detailed record of it. Now, of course, everything's on the blockchain, but still like in exchanges and those sorts of things, you want to make sure you keep a detailed record, right? So that, those are some of the rules for political campaigns when it comes to cryptocurrency donations. Yes, it's okay, right? But you have to make sure it's handled the correct way. Now, we know that some politicians that are running for office are running on being pro-crypto. So it would only make sense for them to, um, it would only make sense for them to, uh, you know, be pro take cryptocurrency as part of you know some of their donations right now what i hope that these politicians do is that if they're running on being more pro crypto i hope that they actually are pro crypto i hope that unlike a lot like a lot of unlike a lot of like a lot of politicians excuse me they promise something they get into office and it never happens and they only want your vote which politicians are synonymous with synonymous with but okay so check this check this out justin FTX sends confidential letters to politicians demanding they return the millions of dollars SBF donated by the end of the month. Now, one of the things that I don't like and what I'm mad about is that, dude, why, you know, are the why are why are they anonymous? Why can't we know who they are? Why does it have to be anonymous? Are these donations anonymous? I thought that part of cryptocurrency donations, you know, was it being transparent. But here's the thing. It probably wasn't cryptocurrency donation. It was probably just fiat, right? Fine. But I, I want to know who they are. Who gave it? Who did they give it to? I want to know. Because one of the big issues with Sam Bankman fried and look at there's going to be a documentary coming out on the relationship between Sam Bankman fried and CZ directed by Mark Wahlberg that we're hearing, which is a very good um, uh, story. The issue was, Yes, Sam Bankman Freed and, and SBF started off on the right foot. But as time went on, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. As time went on, SBF became more and more 
kind of entangled, tethered to, you know, regulators and people in politics in Washington and, you know, top people in our government. And that goes against everything DeFi stands for. And CZ saw this and called him out right before he said he was going to sell his FTT, right? So that's an interesting uh, relationship and how it crumbled, right? And how, how the downfall of their relationship is very interesting. CZ says something to the tune of, I'm tired of pretending like it's a happy marriage. Like, I'm pretty much, I'm going to put you on blast. And he publicly put him on blast, right? The reason why FTX collapsed at a fast pace, because I think it was going to collapse anyways, was first, of course, Alameda Research, their balance sheet was um, exposed. But the reason why it collapsed hard was because Sam McMahon fried said publicly, oh, excuse me, uh, CZ said publicly, I'm selling all my FTT tokens. Now, if you guys don't know, uh, CZ was one of the angel investors for FTX. He helped them get off the ground. He helped another cryptocurrency exchange get off the ground. But SBF became more and more comfortable with regulators. And why wouldn't he? Look at all of his ties. Look at who his brother is. Look at his mom and dad is, right? Look at who his ex-girlfriend's dad's is, right? It's it's crazy, the, the, the webs uh, and crazy how deep the rabbit hole goes when it comes to Sam Bacon Free. It's deep, guys. It's deep, right? It's very, very deep. So I want to know who he gave money to and which laws he lobbied for. Because that's the reason why he gave them money, because he wanted regulators to be more hip uh, or, excuse me, more lenient towards FTX, right? FT that's what they wanted to do. So check this out. It says, before FTX collapsed in November last year, Sam Bankman fried donated millions of dollars to politicians for their campaigns. The exchange now wants all funds back by February 28th, 2023. So about 20 days. All funds. Are they going to get it? We'll see. Right? The exchange wants it. Of course, the exchange is under new management. So John Ray and his boys are like, we need all that money back. And we know who you are. Give it back or maybe they'll expose him. It says, notably, FTX debtors have sent, have sent confidential letters to politici uh, political figures, uh, political action funds, and other recipients uh, of contributions. It says... The latest announcement follow, follows a December 19th, 2022 one by FTX debtors. At that time, they revealed the launch, uh, launch arrangements for such recipients to re return funds voluntarily. Now, if the payments are not returned voluntarily, FTX debtors reserve the right to commence action before the bankruptcy court to mandate the return of such payments. And of course, if that happens, it's going to be made public. It says, according to the statement released on Sunday, Additionally, the recipients will also have to bear interest costs from the date of any action uh, of any action is taken. Damn, that's crazy, right? Now, the question is, were those funds used to uh, for the midterms? A lot the mid midterms just happened. Are they going to be able to get that money back? Like how? What if like they ran for office and they lost, right? And obviously they're not in office, so maybe they're not going to have that sort of revenue back. How do they return all that money? It's an FTX in the midst of clawing back inappropriately handled out, handed out funds. And that's the issue, right? They inappropriately handed out those funds. Like I said, the scenario before, like your uncle gives you $50,000, but then you later realize he robbed the bank, right? It says, like reported recently, FTX advisors have been looking to recover funds that Bankman freed inappropriately handed out. The firm is tracing down hidden assets that could, po that could potentially be used to repay creditors. Taking another step in that direction, lawyers recently asked the court for permission to question Bankman Freed's family and other former top executives. Now, recently, um, a big issue was Sam Bankman Freed posted a $25 million bail. What? Of course, it was $250 million, but 10, 10, 10 to 20%, right? We could say $25 million to fucking, what, 30, uh, $35 million, $40 million. How did he get that money? How did Sam Bankman Freed post bail? That is going to be made public because a judge just said, hey, the people have the right to know who the hell, right? The people have the right to know who the hell, right, uh, is footing the bill for Sam Bankman Freed. Who are those anonymous figures? Now, some people think it's Kevin O'Leary. I don't know. We'll see. It says, uh, leaving aside donations received by politicians, the bankrupt exchanges have also reportedly been clawing back funds it donated to Florida students as scholarships. Oh, this is so sad. I mean, is this right? Imagine getting a, a scholarship. That's crazy to me. Now, if you guys don't know, um, a lot of... Uh, so for Elon Musk, example. Elon Musk, when he was acquiring Twitter, Sam Bankman-Fried offered him $1 billion. And that raised some suspicion 
with Elon Musk. Elon Musk was like, uh, hmm, huh, how are you getting this money? But to us normies, we don't know what's going on. We're not billionaires. We don't know what the hell's going on, right? It's crazy. Well, his parents didn't have that much money, Lady. What's up, Ladybug? How you doing? We're going to give a little uh, talk about Volt here in a second. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this this is so sad, right? Imagine, imagine getting a full ride scholarship and that for no, for no reason, you know, for being a good student, getting a scholarship, planning to go to college, having your dorm picked out and everything, and then being like, nope, not happening. A bankruptcy lawyer uh, opt in, oh, uh, append that going after the kids for the funds was a moral issue. And I think that's, I think that's, I think that's, that's a big deal, right? That's a moral issue. I, I think we should let that slide. Thus, it'd be at the discretion of FTX lawyers to decide whether or not it's worth to do so, right? And here's the thing about these, you know, class action lawsuits and bankruptcies and everything. The lawyers win, baby. These people that are figuring out these issues, they win. Nevertheless, the lawyer cautioned that the prize money donated to mentor organizations could certainly be up for grabs if the company struggles to come up with the funds elsewhere. And right now we know that John Ray has been literally like recovering funds at a fast pace. They recovered like $5 billion with the, in the first month. It was crazy. So FTX CEO John Ray III has had time and time again stated that the exchange can be revived. Despite its bankruptcy, he hasn't lost hope in its return and has left no stone unturned in pumping back life into FTX. Now, what do you guys think? I asked this question earlier. Do you guys think that FTX, you know, would you use FTX in the future if it was under new management? I know a lot of people would never because of the name, but if it had new management, it's still a big exchange. Hopefully some people could get back all the money they lost. So we'll see what happens with that, but it's going to be absolutely insane, right? Absolutely insane. Now I want to touch on vote for a quick, a quick second here, of course, we gave a shout out at the beginning. Of course, Volt is a meme coin in our space, right? It has been going absolutely crazy. Hot number three, they are promising to reach a $250 million market cap by the end of this month, I believe, or by very soon, right? Uh, they, de they bet it David Gox that they're going to reach $250 million in market cap size. Is it going to happen, right? Is it going to happen? It's going to be very, very interesting to see what Volt does. Now, some of the big news for Volt, and of course, hashtag ad, they are sponsoring me this month. You got to make sure that I put that out there, right? But they are a meme coin that I like in this space. They're a meme coin that I didn't take seriously. I called it a shit coin in the beginning because it was a shit coin in the beginning. Literally, it was a Disney dog, right? Nope, the brand looked bad. And the first three steps of the roadmap were bad, in my opinion. But since state uh, roadmap uh, page four and five, they've done a lot, right? They've done a lot. Now, you, you can buy it, you cannot buy it. The taxes are kind of high and those sorts of things, right? But they are making moves. They are building in a bear market. And that's the best thing you can do right now is continue to build in a bear market, right? Continue to uh, pay influencers. Continue to be extremely active, right? Extremely active on Twitter. Continue to support their creators. Continue to build and offer utility in this space that, yes, it's common, a, a cryptocurrency exchange, but a different scenario, a different use case, right? Now, a lot of cryptocurrency exchanges, decentralized exchanges we see launched from meme coin projects, they charge an insane amount to get listed on their platform. But Volt's like, nah, nah. And of course, the big news is that they're getting doing a polygon listing. They're going to bridge, right? First DAO, DAO vote, power to the people, $56 million burn, right? Get some of that supply out of there. And listing on Polygon. Now, what's funny is that we were joking around the other day. We we're doing some quote unquote TA. This thing shot to the moon. This is funny because we were just joking around with this, right? We and Jake were joking around doing some like lame, lame TA, like mocking TA people. But like this thing shot to the moon. So shout out to Volt. Shout out to the Volt Army. Shout out to the best and biggest freaking craziest uh, uh community out there that's always support i mean if you just go to my tweets and you look at all my vote tweets they're they're crazy they always have like 100 likes look at i mean they're always pumping you know what i mean they get more likes than any of my other posts like volt you know the, the community really uh takes care of their own and what's going to pump during the next bull run meme coins the most popular meme coins right and what hundred billion dollar market cap is nothing after seeing what these meme coins did during the last bull run so check them out if you want to. Always invest with caution. You can do what you want. You're grown ass people in here. You have your own minds. You know, don't buy something just because I say buy it. Do your best due diligence. But I'm in Volt and we'll see what happens, baby.
We'll see what happens. Can it do what Saitama did? $7 billion market cap. Can it? You know? So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But yes, of course, they are a hashtag sponsor. That means I am a paid advertiser for this project, right? So keep that in mind. All right. Now let's get into our weekly giveaway, baby. It's already too late. If you haven't signed up yet, if you haven't retweeted, if you haven't retweeted, you're not entered to win. If you're a member on this channel, you're entered to win $50 in USDC every, or USDT every single Monday. Give me one second. Let me go ahead and log into my MetaMask account. If you want to get into the link, uh, the the pry, uh, the the freaking drawing, you got to go to the link down below. And you got to click this giveaway link. We have thirty participants. All you got to do is retweet and be a member on my channel. That's it. How about this, Jimmy? How about this? How about you take a break, Jimmy? How about that one, huh? All right. Let's see who's the winner going to be. Let's go, baby. Let's pick a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, baby. Let's go. FTX. Let's get it, baby. Who is going to win this week? I already copied the link too late. If you didn't get in, you didn't get in. Let's go to our Twitter picker. Let's go. Let's paste it in, baby. Remember, if you won the last six times, though, you cannot win again. Okay? You cannot win. And if the Twitter picker picks multiple, I'm only picking the first one. Okay? Let's go next. These are all our uh, uh, entries. Let's go to draw and pick a winner. We have Brian Barge. Let me see. Have you won, Brian? Let's check. Let's DM Brian. Has he won? Brian has not won. Brian, are you a member on the channel? If you are, I'm going to see. I'm going to send you a secret word. You got to put it in the chat. You have one minute to reply. Shout out to Brian Barge, NFTs ETH, 0% listed. I'm not sure if that's a, uh, you know, I'm not sure if you are a um, member or not, but you have one minute. And we got Awesome Austin in the house. What's up, baby? What's going on, dude? Oh, shit. You ready to send it, baby? Oh, uh, yeah, man. Uh, what, what, you got a winner here, man? What do you get? What are you giving away? Fifty. Well, I give $50 in uh, crypto every Monday, baby. Come on now. Fifty fifty dollars every day, dude. Respect. Just uh, is every, it twice or once? Once uh, Mondays. I can hear myself a little bit. Uh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> She's homesick for today. Is she? Yeah. I'm trying to wait, yeah. I'm trying to wait for. I'm trying to wait for this person to, to pick. I can hear my voice too, and you're can getting you? some feedback. It, yeah. Is there feedback? Yeah, there is feedback. Dude, my thing nope. has been so jacked up lately, bro. You need headphones. Yeah, yeah I can hear myself a lot. Really. Let's see. Here, Let's let see. I don't see. Hold on. Let me change my settings. Okay. All right. I'm not seeing the uh, winner here. We'll we'll pick another winner first, but uh, uh in a little bit. Hopefully. But I'm waiting for you guys to enter. Or Is that better? Type that word in. Yeah. Yeah. Much better. Much better. All right. Cool. <laughs> All right. I'm I'm waiting for this person to do it. If they're not doing it, then we're gonna send it. What do you do? You just do you just do another another uh Yeah, I'm gonna redraw here in a second. I don't think this person's a member anyways. So you gotta be in the chat. So if he's not in the chat, all right, we're redrawing. Sorry, buddy. Snoozy it's lose. Bot. It's a bot. <laughs> Let's see. We have Nando. Nando, are you in the chat? Nando. Let's see. Let's see. Send me some BTFA information. Let me see. What's up, everyone? What's up, Javi? Good to see Javi. XXI. Boomer. What's up, Boomer? I haven't seen oh, Boomer yeah. in a while. What's up, bro? Boomer and Sooner? Yeah. Double rigged. <laughs> All right. No winners here, man. Damn, dude. Let's go. You What's going the, on? You here? should do the StreamYard picker. Uh, I no, yeah, I I want to make sure they do retweet. Oh, because they're retweeting though, you know? your tweet. On That's Twitter, why. Yeah, on Twitter. Yeah. God, you you engagement farming whore. 
<laughs> I'm just 100%, kidding. Maybe. All right. 100%, right? <laughs> hey. Well, the thing is, like, it doesn't matter unless you're a member on my channel. So no, like, I know. It doesn't like, matter. Yeah. So they already follow you and do it anyways, you know? Exactly, yeah. It's just a, it's just a, it's just a thing for the members. <laughs> I thought it was funny. I saw David I saw David Gockstein's tweet today. He's like, good morning. He's like, engage, engage with right this tweet. <laughs> or Desperate. Like Desperate, David. David. <laughs> I was like, man, that's actually pretty genius. Like, hey, make sure you retweet this, or uh, I won't yeah. follow you. But if you're Nando, you need to you need to tell me what the secret word is. I I, I, I DM'd it to you. If you're Nando, <laughs> you, you got to give me the secret word, and then send me your ETH address if that's you. It's sim. It's simp seminar is the key word. Yay! <laughs> Who's ready for simp seminars today, baby? <laughs> Dude, it's so funny. Racket, Racket was out there, and like he, you put, you had your simp seminar uh, thumbnail up there, and then like he had almost the exact same one. I was like, dude, is this Rodney streaming again? Is this another simp seminar? But it was just oh, him who? streaming on his his uh, YouTube. Who? Uh, uh, um, Racket. Oh, he, oh, he did the same thumbnail. Well, sort, sort of like similar. Was all red. Had like the, you know, the the anime oh, running okay. mode. You know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Racket. <laughs> Uh, I thought it was Simp Seminar 2.0 coming in. Uh, Ladybug, get your eggplant. All right, bud, it's you. The secret word is penguins. Bud, send me your ETH address, and let's get on to the MetaMonkey AI presidential. We have 180 people in the chat. I smashed the like button. Let's talk about the keys to the city. Awesome. You can go to share your screen if you want, if you like, buddy. Oh, yeah, dude. And at first, I want to say, dude, we just made an announcement today on Twitter I think it's pretty cool, man. We're uh, we're trying to do some pretty big stuff just for, like I said, we are, a lot of people know that I, I've really tried to focus this around just like community driven, around the community. And, um, you know, you guys do know, some of you do know, I, I shared it with you there. Some of you guys do know that we have some keys out there, NFTs, which will actually be to where you can own properties. Let me hit the restroom real quick. All right, you do your thing. Yeah. You could actually do some get some properties inside the metaverse, inside the MMA metaverse. But the cool thing is, is that we are doing. If you are included in the top 500 keys that sold, and right now, if you actually go to analytics here, and this is on OpenSea as well, you could pretty much buy wherever you want. But if you go on OpenSea, go down to first sell. We're at 214 sells. When we get to 500 sells, um, we're going to give away $10,000 to all key holders. So anyone within the 500 keys that were bought, any wallet that was purchased in there will be included in the the giveaway of $10,000. So we'll just do a random drawing and whoever wins will get $10,000. The the devs wanted to do something to get back um, on this uh, NFT giveaway. So this is something we built into it. Um, yeah, pretty crazy. I thought it was super cool. Uh, <laughs> and also, dude, if you are buying any key, when we get to 250, every 50 cells, we're going to away a free key too. So um, how rude is <laughs> Get him, Jayhawk. Get him. Get him, Jayhawk. <laughs> <laughs> I had a pee. Yeah, I got a week <laughs> Not a M. I got a pee, baby. That's why I end the streams at nine. Yeah. So basically, what it comes down to, I mean, we're doing a lot of giveaways here for the community. Um, you know, people that want to jump in here and be a part of this. I do think it's pretty cool and unique of what we're trying to do. Something completely different. I mean, we're giving out properties, but I think the properties are completely different than like any other property in a metaverse, like Sandbox, the other yeah. side, uh, Mana. You know what I mean? Like the the things that we're doing and the details we're putting in there are are extremely. Um, Impre I think they're pretty damn good, dude. And, and again, it's up for debate, but it's just something different. That's it. What, one of the things that I think are really like important with the keys of the city is that like it, it, it makes it so like your metaverse can build all these partnerships. Well, why? Because if you're a cryptocurrency project and you want to like buy a stadium or something big, you can advertise your cryptocurrency project in that metaverse, which is kind of incentive for big partnerships down the road. Or, or just like people here in your chat, right? You have a guy here, MDK420 says uh, anything Volt. You could get a you could get a, a a billboard in there. You could get whatever you want in there, and actually, you could be promoting Volt for, as your own. You know, uh, using your own billboard it doesn't have to be the, the the business. You could actually say, "Hey, dude, I really like Volt. I want to promote it inside this metaverse. I want to put it on my billboards, and uh, it'll be promoted inside the metaverse. It's your it's your property. Like that, that would be your billboard that you own. You know what you could obviously. There's going to be some you know terms and conditions. Like it's not going to be some crazy stuff you could put on there. You know that could be <laughs> yeah. could be like you know not uh, crazy you know, adult content and stuff like that. But yeah. there are going to be you know you are going to be able to own this property. You're going to be and the, the cool thing is we're giving away in this giveaway here. Like someone has an opportunity to win two two rare arenas, and we're talking arenas like you'll get the rights to these arenas. Not only will you get the the naming rights to it and all the advertisement rights, but if there's any events held inside. You, you'll also be included in any any of the revenue that comes through there. Like you you physically own these and you own anything that happens inside there. So 
like I said, I think we're trying to do things outside the box when it comes to these properties and owning these properties. Um, something different than than what most are doing. And the best part is we this metaverse is there. Like it's not like you have to wait for this metaverse. This metaverse is already there. These things are already created. I mean, these these photos are from our metaverse. Um, so this isn't just some like you know fake uh, you know uh, NFT that was created off the off the block. You know what I mean? Dude, what we saw a lot too last year during the bull run is that these projects like literally would create like these uh like generated pictures. They would create these like these quick uh what is that big gaming system called? I forgot what it's called. It's like a uh, something. It's like a, a generic gaming real engine. They would make like a small real engine clip of like a game and just that's it. Like it was not a real game. It was not a real metaverse. Just like a a, a five minute uh, video clip of something in the metaverse, right? And never had an actual product. Correct. And, that, and so that's what a lot of these other metaverses that are trying to be on Unreal Engine 5, like this is built on Unreal Engine 5. I've had betas out there. That people have actually seen I've been in there. We've actually opened it up to the public to be inside there. It looks like Grand Theft Auto. People are like, oh, it looks like GTA. And it's like, yeah, it's on our Unreal Engine 5, which is the, the exact same thing that they're doing for GTA, but it's pretty damn close. And a lot of these other people, they just go and they'll, they'll just get the marketing, like you said, and, and they'll put it up there as if they have this metaverse, but they don't have the metaverse. Like there's no one out there that is at this level of, of metaverse when it comes to an unreal engine five um, and, and being in cryptocurrency and actually selling properties. And since I've been on here, I've done a lot of research on this and I still can't find one. So if anyone out there can, st can find me one, send it to me, please. I'd love to see it. Uh, Jay, uh, we have a very important question from Jayhawk. Uh, it's a donation. So I have to read it. First of all, shout out to <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Patrick for becoming a member on the channel. That eggplant looks oh so nice next to your name. Welcome to the degenerates. Oh, Jayhawk shit. says, do they make billboards big enough for Rodney's forehead? So I'm in. Uh, dude, that's pretty big. That's pretty big, dude. Look at that thing, dude. <laughs> we can even get an electronic. If you want to, if you want to get an electronic one, we can get one like you know, right there in Times Square. Yeah. You know, Rodney's forehead, right there, dude. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> you assholes, guys. I just did put in the chat. We are having a Twitter live space later today at 3 p.m., which I've been candle lit with Jake G called the Crypto Hour, and we're gonna be talking more about the keys to the city with Awesome over on that. So make sure to check us out on Twitter, and it's like a second dose of cryptocurrency news right it's a fun we just kind of hang out and shoot the shit with the boys oh yeah and and, and like i said i think i think that that's what's wow. nice is that it's not it's nothing like really it's geared towards some crypto but you guys take it you know on a personal level too which is yeah. which is great um so that that's positive just as long as i don't have any more dead prostitutes oh my god jesus christ yeah let's not <laughs> Let's not. Let's, let's not. My chat's wild. I love the. I love our chats though. Your chat, my chat, dude. They're wild, man. Like they yeah. just off the rails, dude. Yeah, it's not lame. You know, it's like we don't. They don't sit there and be like, you know, yeah, you know. Like some some chats are just like, <clears throat> you get banned for saying some ridiculous things. Like I'll, I'll oh, put I you know. on timeout, but like I'm not gonna ban you. Well, you, know? you only put people on timeout when like they're like, I mean, spamming the hell out of it, or really just spamming. Yeah. I don't even think that you ban them if they're talking shit. Yeah. All right. So. One thing I think you got to showcase here is the qual. First of all, you guys invested. I can hear myself again in your your thing. Really? Um, yeah, yeah, I can. Hold on a second. And DJ is uh, these boys uh, literally jumping on top of me here, uh, it roasting me. DJ, thank you so much for the second five dollar donation. Okay, one of the big things is that uh, you guys spent a million dollars. Yeah, I can hear you. You spent. You already invested million dollars of your own money before the project was even doing anything, right? Um, and you're going to be spending two months in South Korea, uh, getting to know NS Labs or working on the project. And it's a talk about NS Labs for a second because that's really important because you guys have a real group of people behind this and building this metaverse. Yeah. So you know one of the one of the crazy things is that. I know a lot of people were like, did we really spend the $1 million? Like that was when I was over there in South Korea, it was the first time I ever saw a million dollars leave one bank account and go into another bank account. <laughs> like, cause they, when they make deals over there, it's like, it's, it's instant. You don't just shake hands and say, okay, hit me up a couple days and I'll, I'll get your, it's like, no, dude, we shake hands, you sign an MOU and like that money transfers. And so, I mean, it's like a wire transfer in the bank account. Yeah. Everything's legit. And so I was like, wow, dude, I've never seen a million dollars actually physically transferred in front of my face. Um, so like that happened. And then on top of that, like NS Labs obviously is is, you know, one of the, the prestigious uh, institutes over there right now in terms of just technology. Um, you know, it's so prestigious now that, like I was saying earlier, uh, and I don't know if anyone actually saw this news, but, you know, the president of South Korea actually visited the labs to start investing in NS Labs, ICT and the whole college it's itself. Yeah. So this is this is this article right here is is actually really, really cool. I mean. You know, our devs were there. Dr. Kim, who runs these labs, was there. 
and, and on top, look at this dude. Like they're in our metaverse. Like they're, they're actually have the goggles on that. I actually yeah. wore, I wore these goggles right here and walked around and, you know, I mean, it's really Crazy, cool that dude. they're investing back into the, the same labs that we're partnering with. And we get to use that technology that they're that they're creating. I mean, um, it's super, super cool. And this was a really big deal out there in South Korea. Obviously, it's not as big here in the United States, but like this is giant, dude. This is huge out there. There's tons of people on it. Um, and yeah, I'm going out there for two months. You guys know that. Uh, to, That's crazy. Yeah, I know. A fan's going to be, uh, she, she supports it. You know what I mean? Because I think this is just a once in a lifetime opportunity to go out there and actually build technology, dude. Like I'm, yeah. I'm excited to get my hands on like the, the behind the scenes of the wall, be able to sit there with the team and yeah. build the blockchain and like see how it works and like all that stuff, dude. And uh, they're not just going to fly me out there if it like wasn't legit. I mean, like, you, are you kidding 100%. me? And, I mean, like this is, this is real. The, the teams own no tokens. The teams know that the dev team knows that like we want to deliver a product and make our money off of delivering the products and the money that comes in through the products, not off the actual token itself. And some people think that that's sort of like crazy that they do that. But I'm like, no. there's no other project out there where devs don't own tokens. This is the only one I know that is fully owned by the community. And and I even went to Skywalker and said, hey, Skywalker, dude, like, yeah. show me that, like, nothing, like, nefarious happened in these, like, the airdrops and stuff like that. And he came back and was like, dude, this was, like, flawless. You know, he came back and said this was, like, one of the best um, pre-sale airdrops he's seen. So, I don't know, man. I, like I said, I think that we're doing a lot of things. We're a small community, but I think we're, we're a very strong, small community. And we're just going to continue to build. We're humble. And uh, that's that's really all it's about for me, man. Yeah, one hundred percent. And then one of the things is like when we do like uh, because we obviously you know we, we're doing promotions and stuff like that. I was asking also like, hey man, can we give away some of the supply and stuff like that? And like every cryptocurrency project that comes to me, which is a red flag, wants to give you some of their supply. Why is that? Because they have no money. Like awesome wouldn't give us supply to give to the people, but you don't want that. Why? Because <laughs> people are gonna dump it. You know what I mean? So that's, well, that's what he's awesome. like. He's like, would you would you do some supplies? I'm like, I'll give you ETH. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I got yeah. I got a lot of ETH. I'll give you. And I got I got a lot of ETH. But I mean, like, I got you know, Mark. I just don't want to give away supply. Like, we don't own any supply. Uh, all supply set aside is for exchanges uh, and for the growth of this. Like, we yeah. don't give away supplies, dude. I, I just. I just never been about that. You know what I mean? And and you know that, dude, just like you, you yeah. don't really accept supplies either, you know? No, you can't. It, 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 it's, it's, it's frowned upon for influence to do that. And it's good that you had Skywalker go through your stuff because Skywalker will be on that ass. Now, here's the thing. He is. Talk about, talk about the wallet real quick. And we'll talk about more about the NFTs here. But talk about the wallet, the pure wallet, because to me, that's the most interesting angle for this. And uh, you guys pretty much, it's all ready to rock and those sort of things. So talk about the pure wallet real quick. Talk about the benefits compared to traditional uh, crypto wallets. Yeah, so we're actually just got. I just got the. Uh, we at the end of the month here, we we're really trying to push out the uh, the cold storage. So we we got the updates coming, um, and I'm going to be testing it probably this week to just ensure that everything's good. But we had another update to it. Um, but really, where this is going to set us apart is the cold storage function. So built into the smart contracts of this wallet, you're going to be able to store your crypto offline, just like you would on a ledger. I'm not going to sit here and say that we're better than ledger. We're you know we're going to try to compete with ledger. But we sort of are. I mean, we are trying to be the first time where you can actually put tokens or coins on your phone and be able to have access to them in a cold storage setting on your phone. Um, and again, that's built through a proprietary uh, smart contract that was created by NS Labs. And that's what we've been putting into this wallet for the last uh, five months. And so this wallet has been out there. We just tried to make it you know, user friendly, make it to where you know people actually want to use the wallet. But it's going to do everything from crypto. It's going to be our, our backbone to our metaverse. It's going to be the backbone to you know offline payments. Um, you know, and again, and these payments are instantaneous. When it's an, in an offline setting, those payments are like within milliseconds, dude. That you'll get your payment. So when it comes to a retail side, like you don't have time to sit there and wait five minutes for an ETH for ETH to clear. You know what I mean? Like because sometimes it could take you know five to ten minutes before you get your Crazy. ETH statement. So you don't have time for that. But if you're in an offline setting and you scan the QR code you know, it, they get it instantly, it's set instantly to their pure side. And when you're trying to really do e-commerce, which is what we're trying to do in the metaverse, and I was trying to show that here is that in the metaverse here, there are an opportunity for people to get large, medium and small stores. Those are in the NFTs where you can actually get one of these NFTs. Well, this this pure wallet's gonna be built in there from the e-commerce side. Like we're already working through with WooCommerce to build WooCommerce into this. And anyone that gets this, like we're doing a free setup for them. Not only are they going to get WooCommerce, we're going to set up all their IT. We're going to basically allow them to be able to sell um, in a Web3 setting through their Web2 and vice versa. So like whoever wins this, like they, it's not like they get it and like, here, here you go. Here's your property. Like in Mana, you go buy the land, you just get land. That's all you get. And then you got to pay all these extra stuff to get all the extra perks. 
we're, we're doing that for free. Like, here's your store. Tell us what you want now. Do you want us to put WooCommerce in there? Do you want us to, you know, work with you on building out the, the interior of it? What do you want it to look like? Where do you want your logos? Like, we're going to be the IT guys for you. And um, that's what I don't think people understand when it comes to this. And some people do, you know, but some people don't think that um, we're going to be able to accomplish this. And, you know, I, I think this is like where it's going to start to get really, really fun. And, and people are going to realize like, oh, shit, they actually can build this out and, and deliver on it. 100%. And, you know, ever since launch, you guys are actually hovering around a decent price when it came to, comes to your launch price. Like I bought another presale and you guys have been hovering around a, a comfortable price the entire time. Now, <laughs> let's talk about the return on the investment to uh, some of the uh, keys to the city, like what you pay for them initially and what you could possibly get back. And then I want to show some of the gameplay to some of the games that are already ready to rock or getting ready to rock in oh, your yeah. metaverse. That's a big deal. Yeah, and I can share with you guys. So, so one crazy thing too that I'll share with you guys here is that um, not only with our price. So, like just hitting up on the price here. I mean, our presale What's price. We got in a presale was thirty one hundred. Now, you know, and then everyone that got in after was thirty is uh, three five zero. We're we're still above that, but our liquidity is killing it, dude. I mean, two two point five million um, to a three point eight one million market. That's cap crazy. ratio. dude. It's like a seventy percent market cap ratio. Like our. Uh, it's it's good, dude, and you you know that you know how that goes. I don't need to explain how liquidity works, but it's it is fantastic, dude, to to know we can walk into that and 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 really anyone that sells like our number one wallet holds like maybe seventy thousand dollars, like that's crazy to think, right? I mean, usually at this at this you know, that that number one wallet's holding millions, but um, that's not how our our systems working. So, just go to click on Saitama real quick. Click on Saitama. You'll see Saitama. the liquidity to market cap. <laughs> Look at their market cap is what. 118 million and their liquidity is 5 million that's crazy that di that gap is absolutely insane and it's like that in a lot of different projects right that means that yeah the, it's, the market cap is 118 million dollars but that doesn't mean there's 118 million dollars of money in that project that's correct and like that that's the thing is, is that i think that, that this there's a lot of things in here and that's one thing i did learn during this entire time is that there is i'm not saying there's smoke and mirrors with saitama but i'm just saying that there, there is some things probably built in to allow it to get to that market cap ratio versus the liquidity ratio. You know, we know that burns are in there. We know that uh, reflections and all these other things that are built into these these contracts manipulate the market cap to to liquidity ratios. And that's no shot at these tokens. That's just what they chose to do. We chose not to do that. We chose to try to be as real and as straightforward as possible. Like we don't got burns. We don't got reflections. We don't got stake. We don't got any of that kind of stuff. It's just a straightforward token. You know what I mean? So that's why we, you see ours compared to theirs. Because if we if we did everything that they did, we'd be at a $60, $70 million market cap too. 100%. Now, I'm going to share my screen real quick. I'm going to go over some of this gameplay because this got me pretty hyped. Too. Look at this. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Bernie. And as you can see right there, if you pause it, you can see that uh, we are we are we already have a mobile version in beta, so we are going to open up our metaverse through a meta, uh, through a, a a mobile version. So you'll be able to access our our metaverse, play our games, and do everything inside our metaverse through a, a mobile version as well. And there's no other metaverse out there that has a mobile version yet. One hundred percent, and I think that's uh, important because when you think of crypto gaming in general, or just gaming in general, like yeah. Actual gaming is, is a big deal, but having the option to play things on your phone and in, 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 in the f mobile gaming industry is huge, right? Um, I mean, how would okay, for example, when you watch YouTube, where do you watch it mostly? Everything's on my phone. I don't do any like I do my streams on YouTube, I do my stuff on here, but for the most part, everything else is on my phone, dude. I, I you, you can't carry around a computer everywhere you go, you know what I mean? And so, if you don't make it accessible for people, they're not going to do it. If it's not easy for them, they're not going to use it. So, it has to be on a phone, it has to be in an iPad version. And um, yeah, this is the next step. And so uh, this is already out there. I mean, this the, a lot of this footage right here was actually done inside the, the phone already. This wasn't like just put on there. This is people running around on the phone in our metaverse. That's awesome. And I want to talk about the, the, the PhD students right now because I was married to someone who was doing their PhD. And I know how much these guys grind. Talk about the workforce behind MetaMonkey AI because I think that's also important. Yeah. So what people don't realize is so NS Labs is a separate is is a private entity on the campus. OK, it was a it was a lab on on the campus as one of the labs. However, Dr. Kim branched it away and be, it became its private company on on the campus. But its goal is to be able to take take students from ICT and the, and the KIT and all that stuff and and bring them in and give them real life hands on technology experience 
uh, through, through a private entity. So these people come over here. And so NS Labs has, you know, professors. They got, they got you know, people that have been in the tech industry from Samsung and LG and Hyundai, all working underneath uh, NS Labs. These students come over. And these, when we say students, we're talking like, you know, 28, 35. I mean, these aren't like kids, like 18 year olds that people think like yeah. these people have worked up through their bachelor's, their master's. Now they're in their doctorate level. And this is their like hands on like this is where they actually go to to do their dissertation, right to go do their hands on research. Like they say, here's my hypothesis. Here's what we're trying to solve. And then they go and solve it. They use NS labs to solve that technology of which they're trying to create. When they solve it, that technology actually is NS labs technology. It's just written by that student who who has created it, and then they they give the hands on stuff. So a lot of these kids come over, or these, these I say these kids, these people come over, and they work for NS Labs as part of their like their internship in a way. And uh, so we have a lot of interns there that are underneath, uh, you know, professors underneath uh, pr professionals that are there that are helping them, you know, guide them and do things and and help build this technology that we see right here. A lot of this, I mean, we have roughly around like I I can't remember, but it's I think there's like ten people on the wallet team. There's 30 people on the metaverse team, and I think there's like 12 people on the blockchain team, all working in NS Labs right now. That's crazy. That's solely big... focused on MMAI. Solely focused on MMAI. Nothing else. All MMAI. That's a big deal, man. And it, you know, that's the thing. It's it's like when when you think about like what's going on with uh, and guys. If you guys want to check out more about MMAI, we're having a Twitter live space later today. That's in the description of this video. And of course, everything about MetaMonkey AI is in the description. If you want to check out the keys to the city. The OpenSea link is also in the description. When you look at what you guys are doing, it's like you guys are putting the uh, horse before the cart. You know what I mean? Like you're actually building utility and uh, building up an actual brand and those sorts of things before you start the hype. And I can imagine if this thing would have came out in the middle of a bull run, <laughs> it would have went absolutely insane. But maybe it's kind of a blessing in disguise because you guys have the kind of time to lay the groundwork. And about another year, in my opinion, before the actual bull market hits. Yeah, I mean, like that's what we're doing. We're not even... I know people say like, this is like, I, I probably should be so, um, abrasive. I don't know what, what is someone said I was being too, um, I don't know, maybe cocky about this, but I, I, I like the team is going to build this regardless. Like nothing stops us. Even the sell, right? We had 500, 5,002 keys. If we sell 500, that's amazing. If we sell 300, that's amazing. Like we still move forward. Like it doesn't stop. This is just the next step in our, our process to get the metaverse going, right? We want to bring people in. Originally, we weren't even going to sell properties, but originally we wanted to bring people in, sell the properties, and then and then people would would do the thing. We could move on, right? And so this is just the next step. And I think that we're going to be primed when it comes to the bull run, right? Our blockchain is going to be out. Our metaverse is going to be up and running. Our wallet is going to continue to grow. And at that next time, people are going to say, oh, shoot, look at, look at MMAI. And um, that's all that matters to us. You know what I mean? As long as you keep building and moving forward, it, it, nothing else should really worry you. You know what I mean? And we're not here to compete. Like People think that we're here to compete with people. We're not here to compete with anyone. We're here to just grow and and, and bring technology to the space. We want to be the number one API creator for Web3. That's all we're trying to do. Make a APIs for Web3 because Web3 is untapped right now. And as you guys know, in Web2, there's APIs up the yin yang. But Crazy. when it comes to Web3 and metaverses and all that kind of stuff, there's, there's not really a lot of APIs where people can plug and play into their metaverse or into their Web3. We want to sort of create that. And that's a lot of what MMAI is focusing on is how to create uh, APIs and, and AI solutions for Web3 and, 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 and blockchain technology. That's it. That's all we want to do. And of course, you know, the Web3 is the block. It's pretty much the internet is decentralized. And what we did see in the last run is that the metaverse was a huge, huge kind of part in cryptocurrency that sent. But the issue was that, I mean, it, it didn't seem like they were really unique. It was like a big game that was like a bad game, pretty much. They didn't have these angles that you guys had. And what we saw is that we had these crazy celebrities spending massive amount of money on these properties that did nothing. There's no utility. It's just that I have a property in so-and-so metaverse. I mean, look at, look at mana right now. You can go buy, you go spend $3,000 on mana right now and you get a little tiny block that ha that's just like some property in a block, in a blockhead type style. Matter, I'm not here to talk shit about mana, but I'm just saying, it's crazy when you start to think of like how much money these people have, but how little they actually use it. And that's one thing that bothers me a little bit about SHIB is that uh, they have a, they've made a ton of money, but it's like they're very slow through their process, right? They're very slow through their metaverse, very slow through Shibirium. And it's like, you guys got money. Like what, what is taking so long? You know what I mean? Is it because you yeah. guys don't have the tech? You're relying on third party tech. And that, that's another issue, right? They're relying on unification to build their blockchain, right? Mana is probably relying on other people to build some of their stuff and they're waiting on these things. And so 
you know, with NS Labs, it's all in house. It's right there. We can, you know, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, absolutely. When you have your own team, uh, when you have your own money, you know, it's easy to get things done, right? You don't have to wait on anybody else, right? That's getting rid of the intermediary. So, 100%. what exactly are you going to be doing in at uh, South Korea for those two months? My my goal is to solely focus on the on the wallet. I mean, you know, you know me. You, you know, you're you're big into you know understanding you know non custodial wallets, like what the user wants, what the user needs. I mean, we use them every single day. Yeah. And so, like, I, my goal is to go over there and help head the the wallet team to be able to build the the best wallet possible from a user friendly standpoint. Like, I'm not the tech guy. I'm not gonna be the guy that's building out the tech inside of it. But I'm gonna definitely be the one that's ahead of like the usability of it people are going to come to me and say hey austin can we see this inside there can we do this or i would like this to be a little bit better like i'm going to be that guy making sure to go back to the team and say hey guys like this is where it's got to be easier this is where people to, for people to use this we got to add this kind of stuff into there maybe reduce it to where it's harder to use over here so like just that kind of stuff is what i'm going over there for to make sure they fully understand because right now doing it through zoom meetings and and the time difference Dude. is so different. It's it's really hard. Where I, yeah. I wish I could just get up across the, get out of my seat, go across the aisle, and just say, "Hey, dude, like fix these three things to make this better." Versus like all the other shit that we have to go through. And so that's why I'm going over there. Awesome, man. Well, we're gonna be expecting some blogs, baby, and some more ASMR out of there, baby. I want to see some good Korean food, baby. You know it, man. I'm gonna be doing. Uh, there was this like, there's a big trend on uh, on TikTok right now of like people over there. They they sell they sell cups. They sell they sell cups of ice inside of like a a boba tea cup. You know what I mean? And then they sell you like little packets and and you pour it in there and they actually match perfectly. And so there's this oh, like big icy. thing. Yeah. So what you do is they go over there, they open it up. It's a it's a plastic thing of ice, and then they pour the drink inside there. They do like these mixtures, and it's like this next big thing on TikTok. And I'm like, dude, that's what I'm going to Korea for. Dude, that's fucking awesome, dude. Well, we're looking forward to it. Awesome, awesome. Guys, if you want to check out MetaBucky AI, of course, everything about this product is in the description down below. Links to the keys to the city are also in the description down below. And I don't know, someone says we might be giving away uh, uh, NFT this week, so we'll see what happens. You know, if you guys want yeah, to tune we'll into these live spaces, yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. If you want if you want to get in, so that wallet, so when whoever wins, if there is a giveaway, that wallet actually um, will have their wallet that when I send it to, their wallet will show up and you, you'll automatically be uh, in on a drawing for not only the the other one, the other NFTs we're going to give away, but also you'll be included in the $10,000 giveaway we're going to do at 500 cells. Absolutely. And we're going to we're gonna run it just like my contest here. Everything's visible on the blockchain. None of this giving stuff to that other people do and other cryptocurrency freaking uh, giveaways. It's all there for you guys to see transparent. So the winner will be announced. And I'm sure it'll be someone from our community. It's got to be. I mean, well, I mean, yeah. if they win, I mean, it's usually someone who's buying into the MMAI, you know, someone who's buying into MMAI. And that's what's cool is that it's not just some random person that has no interest in the project. It's someone who actually took took time out of their day, bought in the NFT and, uh, you know, actually has some true ownership inside here. So 100 percent. Well, awesome. Thanks a lot for hanging out. I appreciate you guys. Make I sure to smash. Too, bro. Hell yeah, bro. Uh, I'll see you at uh, about three, three thirty, three, three o'clock. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. be in there, man. Pop in the uh, Twitter live space. Come hang out with the boys and let's uh, talk some more about my AI and uh, like my clickbait title. Bitcoin to 40K this week? Absolutely not. But, you know, we got to get you, <laughs> you know? <laughs> hey, man. Engagement farming. Let's do it. Hell yeah. All right, y'all. Have a good one. Smash that like on the way out. Thanks for tuning in. And I will see you tomorrow morning.